days now and so what you see right now is my progress as of day two and yesterday and today I focused on the bag I really wanted to have a lot of structure within the bag so that I can proceed with putting in the background and I did start putting in the background today the weather is really bad uh, it's raining and it's dark it's darker than usual at this time of day and so I decided to pause because I really don't like painting to artificial light even though my light bulbs are daylight light bulbs but it's not the same I, I prefer natural natural daylight so yeah I decided to pause and come back to it tomorrow and, and tomorrow I'm hoping to make a lot of progress with the background because then that will allow me to come back to the bag and finish it up and my goals for the bag are really ambitious if, if you look at some of the paintings from 18th century so all these guys were so good at making you feel things without touching what I mean by that is, for example, like when you look at some of these paintings and you see how they did fabric, for example, all these elaborate costumes, you can, you can feel how the fabric feels without touching it. And so that's kind of what I'm after uh, with this bag. 
this is a contemporary version of, of that. The reason this is ambitious is because it's very difficult to achieve something like that in a painting where, you know, you are able to, the viewer is able to feel uh, the, the texture without actually touching it. So the challenge here is that this bag is empty. And so when I paint it, I, I really want to make sure that it feels empty. Um, and also the texture of the plastic, uh, there's, there's a lot of information within the bag that I'll have to break down in order to get it on the canvas. So I don't know, I'm not sure how successful that's going to be at the end, but that's my goal. Uh, it's, it's an ambitious goal, I think, but we'll see how it goes. So far, I'm really enjoying this painting. Um, that may change if things start to go downhill. By the way, whatever happened to the I Love New York plastic bags, the only reason I have this bag is because I saved it a long time ago. And the reason I saved it is because I've always liked the simple design of it and I've always thought I'm going to do something with it, but I, I didn't know what. And recently I was cleaning up my studio and I saw this bag and I was like, wow, I was, I was supposed to do something with it, but I never did. And so now I definitely have to do something with it. So I, I hang it on the door and it's been hanging there for a while as a reminder that I have to do something with it. And so finally I decided to do this painting and I'm really happy I, I finally got to it. So and this brings me to another point. This brings me to the point of working with organic compositions. So this to me is an organic composition. And the reason I'm saying this is because it, it's, it's not something I had to spend a lot of time setting up. So this bag was already hanging on the door. And also there is a um, power outlet in the wall and there's stuff hooked up to it. With the power outlet, there's this metal thing. Um, that runs up the wall. I think the wires are actually in there. There's, I didn't change anything about the setup. I, I decided to go with whatever presented itself to me. I really didn't have to do much to to get the setup ready for painting. It's it's it, it already exists in my studio. And in case you're confused, I can give you another example of an organic composition. And so that would be a landscape. With the landscape, everything is there in front of you. You don't have to move things around. Obviously, if you want to edit the painting as you go on the fly, you're, you're free to do so. But it's not like, you know, you don't have to move the buildings around from point A to point B in order to get the composition you, you need. But what you do have to do is move yourself around and crop things, right, depending on your areas of interest. And same thing here, all I had to do was basically just decide which parts of the bag, the door, and the outlet I wanted to capture. And so I settled at this this composition right here which is basically I decided to to keep the bag mostly to the left or to the right depending on the point of view I don't know and then uh, have enough canvas to include the power outlet with the metal thing that goes up the wall and and that's it my goal for today was to paint as much of the bag as possible so I can work on the background. Yeah, I already said that. So let's just keep going because I can't wait to finish this painting.
All right, so I took a break from this painting for a few days last week because the weather was so bad. It's been raining and it was very cloudy and as a result my studio was very dark and cold and moody and I really don't like painting in this type of conditions. So I decided to pause and let the painting dry. Is this out of focus? No, all right. And this also allowed the painting to dry because last week at some point I, I got to the point where uh, I wasn't, the paint wasn't sticking anymore. So this break was good for both of us. And, and also from experience, I, uh, I know that it's best to paint in the same lighting conditions from session to session because otherwise I would have to spend a lot of time trying to paint over something I've done the, on the, in the prior session just to kind of even things out based on the current lighting conditions. So I really wanted to avoid that and um, not waste too much time. I was able to come back to it yesterday and the weather was so beautiful. My studio felt really good and warm. It was such a beautiful day that I should have actually taken a break outside, but when I prioritize, I always choose to paint or draw over anything else uh you know so that's my life so i decided to stay uh in the studio and just paint and yesterday was a really nice productive long painting session i mainly worked on the bag i, I feel like the bag is the main focus here so i did want to give it enough attention there's one area that i still have to work on i didn't finish it yesterday and that's the top part but i'm going to wait until it's time for me to work on the doorknob um, i tend to work in adjacent section i i was reminded of a few things as i as i'm painting this so i tend to uh take the paintings out of my uh, studio uh in between sessions just because i want to view the paintings or even drawings in different contexts different lighting conditions and that usually allows me to identify any potential issues that i really need to address uh, in the next painting sessions and so when i when i took this painting outside of the studio i started thinking that maybe the values that I've used for uh for the bag and the light effects that I that I created in the bag that they are too dark. I started wondering why why could that be? When I look at the real bag that's hanging on my door outside of the painting sessions, it appears much uh lighter. It basically appears as white. And, and so I started questioning my choices around the the values and whether they are incorrect. And so I decided that next time I come back to the painting, I'm going to remix the paint and I'm going to really carefully uh, analyze the values to make sure that they're not too dark. And that's exactly what I attempted to do yesterday. I remixed the paint. I uh, basically, my palette was much lighter. But when I started painting and when, when I started staring at the bag again, the values and the light effects and everything I've done previously seemed correct. So basically the judgments I made about the values and the light effects and everything and the colors were basically correct. And so that made me think about how things are not the way we think they are. And I'm saying this because this bag is not white. I mean, it appears white when I look at it quickly so for example when i pass it by and i take a quick look at it the bag appears white when i view it with uh, my peripheral as i pass by it i i see it as the white thing that's hanging on my door and even now when i think about it i think about it as this white thing white plastic bag okay but when i stop and look at it like really look at it with the intention to understand what I'm looking at, I realize that that detailed interpretation is much different from the interpretation through a quick look or like a quick glimpse. The only 
adjustments I had to make uh, to the values was related to my uh, bright and sunny lighting conditions because as a result, the bag did appear a little bit lighter. And so I did want to preserve that effect specifically. But for the most part, the values that I had interpreted at the very beginning when I was painting the thing um we're basically correct. Painting from life is, is amazing this way because it makes you think about things. So this reminded me of this uh, specific scene from The Matrix where Neo takes the red pill and he goes through this whole transformation into the best version of himself. And when he wakes up, he asks uh, Morpheus, why my eyes hurt? And Morpheus tells him that's because you have never used them before. I, I always remember this scene because it's such a great analogy for painting from life. Because painting from life makes me, makes me feel exactly that. Uh, when I paint from life, I am forced to see things the way they are, uh, to the point that my eyes hurt sometimes. Yeah, it, it basically makes me see things the way they are. It forces me to see things the way they are. This is also one of the main differences between painting from life and painting from the photo. Painting from life teaches you how to see. And, and obviously there is like still a lot of limitations that I either impose on myself or, or the limitations exist because is just the way my my eyes are built and I'm not able to see everything and also you know because of the fact I'm I'm not I'm not neo at least when I paint from life I'm able to train myself to see what you see here is basically the result of this intense observation and analysis of the value looking at at the thing with intent with intent to understand what I'm looking at, and that's the result. There are still some uh, issues uh, with with edges in certain areas, like this this line that goes up in this uh, really sharp corner when where the bag breaks. I still have to correct that uh, because I feel like it's too sharp. It's like this really thin, sharp line that goes up, and it makes it seem unreal and there are a few issues like that on uh, in certain areas of the bag something that I'm going to adjust um, a little bit later but I'm actually really happy how the bag uh, is going so my plan for the next few sessions is going to be basically to work on the wall outlet and the stuff that's behind the door there's a paper bag and uh, the metal container that uh, is left over after I drank the Turkish tea. Now that I think about it, I should have put something more interesting. But I think this painting still works because given the fact that we're moving away from plastic, the bag that's behind the door is a paper bag. So I feel like that's a nice contrast that I wasn't even planning on. Uh, again, this organic composition, just painting whatever exists in my, in my studio, in the, in the place around me um, is really working out for me. So, so yeah, so that's my plan for the next few sessions and let's just keep going because I really can't wait to uh, finish this painting.
was the weather was really nice and I really needed to get outside and just breathe fresh air that doesn't uh, contain uh, paint fumes. As usual, the park is very lively. There's a lot of music going on there, so you may hear some salsa in the background. So for a change, I decided to do this diary in the park. As you can see, I do not have the painting behind me, but you can see the final version of the painting on my Instagram page. I finally finished it and I'm really happy I finished it because as usual, when I spend too much time on a painting, I get a little bit bored with it. In session four, I start thinking about other things. In session five, I'm totally like, okay, I really need to move on to other things. I finish it knowing that there are still things I could continue to improve on, but there comes a point where I say, whatever I've done is enough, and that's it but he almost fell. So for the purpose of this conversation, I am done with this painting. One thing I wanted to document is the fact that uh, I learned a lot about mixing colors. What I usually do is um, I try to find the color that I need. And when I try to find it, I end up wasting a lot of time because I randomly choose colors I mean in some in some sense based on the color theory that I think I understand but for some reason I do end up putting in a lot of colors together I realized that I need to look for more efficient ways for mixing colors so I decided going forward that before mixing paint I'm going to think through the ingredients. So when I was uh, mixing paint for this painting, I found that mixing uh, red and blue to get the purple worked out really well because that was my local co color. I adjusted the value using white because the bag is, is not white, but it's pre pretty light in value considering. And then on top of that, I used another color to either warm it up or cool it down. So my formula is basically going to be uh, get the local color, then adjust the value, and then um, adjust the temperature. So I calculated at most three colors uh, that are really needed. And, and again, that excludes the white. I, I'm not able to paint without white. I do use, I did use a lot of white for this painting. So that formula basically forces me to be a little bit wiser about my color choices because uh, I really want to avoid trying to look for the color through random mixes. One of the reasons why I was able to finish this painting relatively quickly was because of that reason. When I switched to that formula, things went uh, a lot more, a lot smoother, I would say. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, keep that up. And actually this brings me to another point because I have so many paint tubes. I collect paint, I'm like a paint collector. I have a lot of paint tubes uh, in my toolbox. I think I need to do an analysis of the pigments that are in each paint because I think what I end up doing is like mixing paint that contain the same pigments so that's also not as efficient so um, I'll, yeah I'll definitely have to analyze the pigments within each paint too I do recall trying to do that analysis in the past when I was learning the medium of paint but I never went anywhere with it I think I just abandoned the whole analysis for some reason bottom line is the painting is finished I learned how to approach uh, paint mixing a little bit better and yeah I think I'm ready to move on to another project uh, I now I have to think about what I want to paint next so uh, I don't know I haven't decided yet but uh, stay tuned okay <laughs>